Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And this is Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. And we are now out of the Torah and into the Matthew. We're into the Besorah. We are from the Torah to the Besorah. And the Besorah is what, boys? It's the good news. It's the good news. It's the absolute good news. We just spent 180 some days and we found out there were 178, 174 Four. Four commandments of Yahuwah, give or take. Not too many give, not too many take. I don't think there's any take. There, you might, we, there might be a few. But there are 174 commandments of our creator from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And a, that, we can do. that we can keep, right? And so there are other commandments and things that are Levitically uh, based that we absolutely cannot do because we are not Levites. We do not have any kind of the training. We're not there. We're in the land and any of the sort. We don't have our uh, guide, Moshe, and nor do we have Yah. Uh, walking with us and dwelling with us and teaching us how to do this stuff. So we have to depend upon our Melchizedek priest. And our Melchizedek priest is the blood atonement of our creator's son. We believe that our creator and his son are two individuals. There is a very evil thing that they call the Trinity, where they say that our creator and his son and the Holy Spirit are all one. And people pray to Messiah Yahusha. And when I say Messiah Yahusha, I guess I got to remember this is a brand new segment. So for those of you who do not know who Messiah Yahusha is, there were no J's in Hebrew. So the name that we know of as Jesus the Christ, there were no J's. He could have never, ever, in, ever been called that. And names do not translate. They, they just don't. My name is Jason in English. In Spanish, it's Yason. And it, they, they, it, it's because the J's sound like a Y and they, they just, the names don't translate. So I'm still Jason down here, even though they cannot pronounce it. Messiah Yahusha, it's like Joshua with a Y. This is what we're getting into today. So we are going to find out the laws, statutes, and commands of Messiah Yahusha. And there are other laws. There are other commandments that he has given to us. And we are going to dial these in. We're going to put them on a sheet like we did with the, the laws of Yah. And we are going to find out what's different, what changes, what he wants us to do, how do we follow him better, how do we dial in the Torah better, and how do we take an example of somebody who walked in the Torah as an example for our life and how we should be acting and how we should be uh, displaying ourselves. So let us begin. And first of all, actually let us, uh, first of all, we are going to go over here. We are in month seven. We are in the third day of the week. For, oh, actually, third day of the month. We are in the fifth day of the week. And so um, we had a full moon or a new moon a couple of days ago. And so the new month has changed. And so we are heading into um, a Shabbat. So we have one more day before a Sabbath. And for those who have never listened to this, um, Many people will say, Jesus is my Sabbath, and we are going to go through all of this, and we're going to prove that even though you may say Jesus is your Sabbath, our Creator has told us to keep the Sabbath, and we need to keep the Sabbath for all times. It is a mark of the people. It's a mark on the people by our Creator, and it is how we establish our covenant with our Creators by keeping a Sabbath, and we also have um, some holy times in this month. Um, on the 10th day of our creator's month. So literally next week at this same time is uh, the day of atonement. And so we- and It starts at evening uh, it, on the 9th. It starts at evening on the 9th. So when sunset hits, um, the, it says you're supposed to afflict your souls. Most people will afflict their souls by fasting. And so if that is how you choose to afflict your soul. Um, it begins that day and all day and at sunset it ends. And so it- then we also have the following week, we have the beginning of Sukkot. And so we will do some more videos on that. But for right now, everybody, let's get into our handy dandy split screen. And we almost made it. And we'll, we'll get this. We, we, had a, we had 173 times we tried and we still couldn't get it on that. So the one here's what we have is we are reading this out of many versions of this on the top left is the king james version the what everyone calls is the the unfallible word of yah 
um, which it does. I mean, they, they took the name of him out and they also took his son's name out. So I don't know how infallible that is, but that is on the left hand top. On the right hand top is the NIV as another translation. The bottom we are using a version called the Sefer. It's by the Sefer Publishing Group. And we would probably recommend not ever getting this until they fix their translation errors. And we're going through this and we're exposing the, the horrible translation errors that they have. And then the boys, Caden is to my left. He's reading out of the Holy Scriptures. Jaden is to the front of me. She, he's reading out of the Holy Scriptures. Nicole is reading out of the Amplified Scriptures. And Eli is my wingman who helps me dial in the top so we can get this all dialed in. So let us begin and see what we can figure out. And this is, um, this is one of the main reasons I like the Sefer is because the genealogy is messed up in Matthew. And a lot of people are like, well, it, it says there's 14 generations and 14 generations and it, it gave you 13. So we got to figure that out. We will figure that out today. Here we go. The Sefer of the generation of Yahusha Hamashiach, the son of David, the son of Avram. Avram begot Yitzhak, Yitzhak begot Yaakov, and Yaakov begot Yahuda and his brethren. And Yahuda begat Peretz and Zorak of Tamar. Okay, we'll finish there. And Peretz begat Ketron, and Ketron begat Aram. Okay. Well, these are some celebrities that we have already, um, we just got through with these guys, right? right. So we have um, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and we have Yahuda. Yeah. And then we also have something very funny with um, Tamar, right? And so this is the lineage of our creator. Now, Tamar was who, boys? She was supposed to be the, the wife of the son of Judah. Yeah, but, he, but he was wicked in the sight of Yah, so Yah sh struck him down, and then he was she was supposed to go to another son of Yehuda, and he was evil as well, so he was struck down. So Yehuda said, "Wait until my third son is grown up, and I will give you him to marry." So she went back to her father's house as a widow, and Judah basically, his wife died, and he was looking for something, and he ended up becoming basically becoming a prostitute. And they had this through fornication. So Tamar, because she had been, I guess, ripped off, and had they, the part of the law is that you are supposed to marry your brother's wife if you die and she does not have children. So that is part of the law. Yahudi did not want to do that, and and with his kids because he already had two that died when he was trying to get this done. And Yahuda's current wife, before she died, did not want that to happen. So Tamar was a widow, and Tamar knew that Yahuda was going out to a field, and she dressed up as a prostitute. And um, Yahuda went and uh, went into her, and he left her with some, um, like a uh, staff, ring, a, a ring, ring and a, his staff or something of the sort. And um, so the lineage of Messiah Yahusha. It's not incestual, but it is. Um, it, it was a Torah-breaking thing. You're not supposed to uncover the skirt of your kids' wives and things of that nature. So this was very interesting. I thought I would um, stop and explain that to everyone, how this is coming. But this is very, very important because this is the lineage all the way to our Messiah. All right. Here we go. And Aram begat Amniadav, and Amniadav begat Naksum, and Naksum begat Salma. And Salma begat Boaz of Rakov, and Boaz begat Oved of Roth, Ruth, and Oved begat Yishi. Okay, so who's this? Who's, who's Jesse. This? Okay, so yeah, I know. So it's, it's um, in the NIV. It says uh, Salman, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. Where are we at right here? Who who is who are we dealing with? Who's Jesse? Uh, Jesse is David's dad. Yeah, and so who's Ruth? Ruth is his, uh, I think, grandma? Ruth she, is his grandma. She was but, a Moabite. Yeah, she was a Moabite. And so this is something that everybody, I guess, should probably understand, is that our lineage of our Messiah it came started off a little odd with Yahuda, but it continued on. And now we have a somebody in the lineage of our Messiah who was not part of Yashrael. And Ruth came in and... Um, she, because of Naomi, she she ended up becoming a, a Yisraelite, Yisraelite, and she married Boaz uh, on the request at the request of her mother-in-law. Okay, and so we have we're all the way to almost King David. And Yishe begat David the king, and David the king of begat Shalema, which Solomon, of her that had been the woman of Uriah. Okay, so this again 
So we have three odd things in the lineage of our creator. And I'm not saying odd that is, is anything wrong with this. I'm just saying that people aren't perfect. People don't do the right things all the time. And how anyone want to go over the quick lineage of how did David end up with uh, his woman, Uriah? Well, so Uriah Dave, was like kind of like one of his good friends, one of his, was one of his dudes of the army. His war buddies, one of his yeah, friends. Yeah, well, he was, he was, David's a general, right? He was, right. He's, the, he's the man. And so, he was the king, and he like saw Uriah's wife bathing, and he couldn't look away. And then he got her pregnant. And he had to have some really good eyesight, I'm say, thinking. I mean, I don't know how that's even happened. rough. Happen. Yeah, but how does that even happen? I don't. You, it's not like you can really see stuff real well from way up top or something. So whatever happened, it was probably, you know, the spirit of Hasatan got into him a little yeah. bit. And and, and then uh, he got pregnant, and then he decided to, since you're, you want, didn't want Uriah to find out, he'd let Uriah die in battle, so he had all his men, like, back up he and let Uriah take the Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say he let Uriah die. He, well, I mean, he, he told everyone, murdered him. He told everyone to back up. You're right, he did. He, he allowed, he... he orchestrated his death which was even more evil than anything else and what kind of punishment did he end up with because he had orchestrated that guy's death uh, his son died yeah his son died and so I think what it was seven days after his son was born mm -hmm. he hadn't eaten for seven days because he knew his kid was going to die and then he um, when the kid finally died he started eating and everyone was really confused they're like shouldn't you be mourning he's like because he knew his son was going to die because of the great evil that he had done and i don't know if everyone around him knew of this great evil or not i know nathan the prophet did but he's the only one yeah so he, he and nathan had issues <laughs> yep all right so seven and shaloma beget rock of him rehoboam and rehoboam begat aviyahu and yaviyahu begat asa and Asa begat Yehoshaphat, and Yehoshaphat begat Yoram, and Yoram begat Uzziah, Yahu, and Uzziah, Yahu begat Yotham, Yotham begat Akaz, and Akaz begat Yeki, Yekiz Yi Yahu. Okay, what is your Hezekiah. Hezekiah. So yeah, Yekiziah, heck, Hezekiah. Okay, and so we are we are to the middle here, and Uzi Yahu begat Yotham, and Yotham begat Akaz. And I already did this one. I liked it so nice. It was I read it twice. And Akaz begat Yaki Yaz Yahu, um, and ten. And Yeki, how do let me let me read this correctly because this it's a hard reading here. Yek is Ki Yahu. Okay. Yek is Ki Yahu. Mine says Kizi Yahu. Kizi Yahu. Kizi Kizi Yahu. Yeah, Kizi Ki Yahu. Kizi Ki Yahu. And Kizi Ki Yahu begat Menasha, and Menasha begat Ammon. And Ammon beget Yossi Yahu. Now, is this Manasseh the same Manasseh as we know? No, it's Couldn't way be. down the line. <laughs> way down the line. This Manasseh was evil. Yeah. Okay, and Yossi Yahu beget Yeko, Yekon Yahu and his brethren. And about the time, they were carried away to Babel. And after they were brought to Babel, Yekon Yahu beget Shel Aliatel, and Shel Aliatel beget Zerav Babel. And Zerubbabel beget Aviyahud, and Aviyahud beget Eliakim, and Eliakim beget Azur. And Azur beget Zadok, and Zadok beget Yochim, and Yochim beget Elia, El El. And what did you guys? Eliud. So mm -hmm. it's uh, much easier in the English when you read it. And Eli, El Eliel beget Eliezer, and Eliezer beget Mathan, and Mathan beget Yaakov. And Yaakov beget Yosef, the father of Miriam, of whom was born Yahusha, who is called Mashiach. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. What does your guys say? We're in 16. Yep. And Yaakov brought forth Yosef, and the husband of Miriam, of whom was born Yehoshua, who is called Messiah. Okay, so it, it's not, did, does that make sense to you, what you just read? No, because if that was the father of Yeshua, he's not biologically the father. He's like this, almost this well, stepdad. Well, here, here's what, and Yaakov beget Yosef, the father of Miriam, of whom was born Yahusha, right? Who's called Mashiach. This is what it says here, okay? What does your guys say? And in 16, in the NIV, it says, And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who was called the Messiah. Okay, so what... Do you guys have anything? I've heard some of that NIV. Okay. Just... So, and Yaakov beget Yosef. So, okay. So, do you guys understand what it's saying here? There, there's two Josephs. Uh -huh. There's two Josephs, right? So, Mary's, Miriam, 
husband, who she did not get with until after Messiah Yahushua was born, his was he was Joseph, and her dad was Joseph as well, right? And most of the translations have this completely wrong. And so here, here is this, 17. So all the generations from Abram to David are 14 generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babel are 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babel into the Mashiach are 14 generations. So what... What you guys see right here, if you will count this up, that you will see in your, or at least in the king, you're only, we only have 13 generations because they did not get this translation correct. The translation is correct that um, Miriam's father was Joseph as well. And I don't think it, it says that in here. You guys with me? Yeah. Okay. So that is very important because the, the Sefer has the correct lineage here that actually has the right 14. And if you count up in the other ones, they do not have that, okay? Now the birth of Yahushua HaMashiach was on the, this wise, when as his mother Miriam was in spouse to Joseph, Yosef, before they came together, she was found with child of the Ruha HaKadosh. Okay, it doesn't say Joseph. Why doesn't it say Joseph, guys? It's in this version, it says Yosef. Why doesn't it say Joseph? So there were no J's. There were no J's in Hebrew. So the the guy's name, she wasn't Mary, and she and he wasn't Joseph. He was Yosef and Miriam, um, is is their correct names. There are no J's in Hebrew, so there, the guy's name wouldn't be called Joseph. Okay, so what did this say right here? It says that Yosef, uh, they came together. She was she was pregnant, right? How was she How was she pregnant? By the Ruach Hakodesh. Right, Ruach Hakodesh. Right. And um, so that's very interesting, a man going into and something about Hebrew um, culture, and I guess it should be any culture, is that um, you stay a virgin until the day of marriage. That is, that is something we have completely lost in the world we are in today. Nobody cares. Um, kids lose their virginity at like 12 and 13 years old. It is insane. And even, even younger these days um, because the world is so filthy and, and in, the, in the world that we're in right now, the schools are teaching the, the kids how to be opposite sexes of what they are. It teaches young men how to be little girls and, and, and little girls how to be boys. And there's no distinction here. But in Hebrew culture, it was a huge thing. If your wife, if your wife was found to have a child, you would kill her, right? You would kill her. You would find the guy who did that and you would kill her um, because that is what the Torah says. And so this is what we're getting into. 19. Then Yosef, her man, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. So essentially, this guy was, was he was kind of going, not against the Torah, but he was trying to, he loved her, right? He, he probably loved this woman really, really much. And even though he like found she was pregnant, how else would you get pregnant if it wasn't another man? We've never seen anything of the sort that somebody got pregnant from something else. And so it didn't make any sense for him. And, you know, you could, t this guy probably had some really rough times or really rough days as he's trying to figure this out. 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yahoo appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Yosef, son of David, fear not to take unto you Miriam, your woman, for that which is conceived in her is of the Ruha Kakadesh. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yahusha, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay, now what do we know about the word Yahusha? It means salvation. Yeah, it means Yahuwah is salvation. For the name of ha Hamashiach Yahusha, also the leader of the tribe of Ephraim. Uh, Yahusha, the son of Nun. And um, so we have a lot of cases of Yahusha. And people don't, it's, it's hard to understand that our, the son of the creator's name isn't Jesus. We've all been indoctrinated into it. We, we all have fallen under the king. And um, it, there's no such name. And, it, you know, Acts 4.12 says there's no other name under heaven by which man may be saved. And, you know, people will go, well, God knows my heart. And unfortunately, that is very true. And he says the heart of man is a very wicked thing and that we need to uh, essentially be, you know, in and around the Torah at all th things. Okay, so we have salvation that has been brought to us. Now, is this the first time in scriptures we've heard about salvation coming? No. Where's it? Where's it at? It's in prophesied. It's in the Torah. It's all over the place. Yeah, it's all over the place. Even in Second Ezra, where they they rip that out of the the scriptures, it talks about Yah says he will bring his son and he will save he will save the people and he always says his son. He's he's not the creator did not uh, superimpose himself to make himself the son 
and it's all one person. That's insanity. And that is actually a satanic um, memo by the by Catholic Church. You know, it was way back in the day, 325 uh, AD, 325 years after our Messiah walked the earth, they decided they were going, the Catholics made a, um, I don't know, a pledge or a thing, and they put it into their church, and they said they're all the same person. And, you know, from here we have now, everybody's just so confused that people will actually pray to Yahusha, and, and that is that is unbiblical. Okay, 22. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Yahuwah by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call the name of, they shall call of the same Emmanuel, which being interpreted is El is with me. This is a sticking point right here, guys, because people will say um, that our creator and his son are the exact same person. But it doesn't mean that. You so, can you can name, go ahead, Jade. So if I were to say, like, you do a good deed for me, like, God is with you, that doesn't mean you are God. Yeah, and, you know, obviously, Yas sent his son. And if he sent his son, that means El is with us, right? That means he's he gave us our uh, commander-in-chief that we need to follow and that we need to be um, living our life by. And so, yeah, El is with me does not mean that Yahuwah is there it is the son of yahuwah and he's obviously with him but it's not him okay 24 then yosef being raised from sleep did as the angel of yahuwah was bidden him and took unto him his woman and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called the name yahusha okay it's very interesting so there is a married couple that went through the entire ceremony that went through all of this and here's the thing is yosef joseph would have had to kept things on the down low. He would have, because she would have been pregnant. Everyone's, oh, congratulations, Yosef. So it was going to be an odd thing, especially at the beginning of this. And we're not going to know what, I mean, we're just humans. We don't know the plan of our creator. And so this man was a really, really good man. He really, really took care of his old lady. It's not old lady, but that's what we call women. Or I don't even know if it's called women. I, I'm going to get in the hot seat. But your, your woman, your wife, right? He really took care of her, and he wanted her not to be embarrassed. The, the thing, in, the, here's the thing. There is a law of rape in, in the Torah. The law of rape is that if a man rapes a woman and she is not engaged to be married, that he must marry this woman and never ever divorce her. And we thought that was a very strange law, but we did not understand Hebrew culture. We did not understand that if a woman was defiled and she was not a virgin, she would she would be looked down upon in society. She would never ever get married. No man is never going to want a non-virgin woman. And it is she would have been cast away. In fact, she would have been cast back to her father. And then when her father would have died, she would have been she would have been in the street. She would have been homeless. There would have been poverty. And so Yah was actually putting together stuff for all of this. So it was a major thing that the women stay um, cling, that they stay undefiled, and that pure. so yeah, pure. And so this was an incredible event. This was an incredible time in our history, and I believe this with every last bit of it. Because we've been told that there was somebody that's going to come. And you have to understand the Torah. If you do not understand the Torah, then you will never understand Messiah Yahusha. You will never understand it. If you do not understand the Levitical sacrifice, if you do not understand the pain inflicted upon little animals, when we sin, and it's not like our creator is, a, is an animal herder, right? He's like, oh yeah, I'm just going to go hurt the animals. It's because you are sinning. He hurts the animals instead of hurting you, if you understand that. It is by their blood that you were redeemed, and it is by the blood of Messiah Yahusha that we are redeemed as well. We don't have Levitical priests. We all live in sin, and without Messiah Yahusha, we have no way forward. We have no Levitical... We, we, we've lost all of our Levitical priests. We do not have a priest, but now we have a Melchizedek priest who is the son of the most high and he will come and he will reign. He will, there, there's a mountain that will descend upon Mount Zion. There's a, a city that's going to descend upon Mount Zion and there will be a king. And this king is Messiah Yahusha. And so these are very exciting readings that we are into. I'm excited about this. Um, it's, it's, it's a, a breath of fresh air. Um, and we will be continuing on with this. And we hope that you guys will uh, hang out with us as we go through this, as we study this, as we try to figure this stuff out. And as we see the link between Messiah Yahusha and the Torah. 
And I think what we're going to find out is we're going to find out that Messiah Yahusha, he may have adjustments to the laws that we know, but there's nothing that changes. He adds finite details to things that are very, that should be obvious to us, but are probably not. And that's what we're going to find out. And that's what we're going to um, depend upon because that is who's going to be reigning over us. And so we want to be in sync with Messiah Yahusha, but you will absolutely not be in sync with Messiah Yahusha if you do not keep the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator. Thank you guys very, very much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you to our little digital family out there. We love you guys very much. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. We hope you are blessed. And Jade, which tonight is youth for y'all. Yes, tonight is youth for y'all. If you have, if this is a new segment, and we will actually pick up probably a lot of different people watching this because nobody wants to see the Torah, right? Nobody ever wants to see the Torah. But the the Matthew, Mar Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they might actually watch. So we have what they call youth for y'all. It is just some youngsters, some eighteen year olds, and a fifteen year old, and. They are um, reading through Proverbs. Where are you guys at right now in Proverbs, guys? 24. 24. And how many do you have before you're done? Uh, it goes to chapter 31. So 31. It's... So you still have a little bit. You still have a few weeks. Yeah. So Okay. So that's it. Thank you guys very, very much. And we love you all. And we will see you again tomorrow. Nice. Cool. Cool.